I've got three really rocking hacks. The first two also have to do with my origin story. They are from being raised in an Asian household where moms have all of the best life hacks. The first one <laughs> is to eat chips or popcorn Cheetos with chopsticks because you don't get your hands dirty. And you know, we're, we're always on our phones. You, you can't eat chips and play with your phone at the same time, right? So it not only prevents your hands from getting greasy, you also can control your pacing, eating. You don't, you're not like, I. If, if I'm eating chips with my hands, I'm inhaling that bag. Ha handfuls of chips at a time. But if I use chopsticks, I have to pick them up one, maybe two at a time. And it just helps with the pacing. So that is hack number one. I'm Janet Ahmed host of Hacks and Hobbies podcast and a digital presence advisor at HumbleZone. This episode is brought to you by Home Studio Mastery. I launched a consultation and course program to help podcasters and course creators to create a space in their homes that will reduce the friction of creating content and appearing their best when showing up on camera. The pandemic gave us a lot of issues, but this one is here to stay. We're now so much closer to our audience thanks to video becoming more popular and affordable. I help guide folks who want to create Hollywood worthy studios to not only capture great content, but also build more confidence, more authority, and be more comfortable in front of the camera. If I can do it, you can too. And with my help, you can do it faster. So if you'd like to learn more, visit homestudiomastery.com and how you too can create a home studio that brings out your personality, professionalism, and possibilities. Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. We're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life. We want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. Today, we get to speak with my good friend, Eden. She leads customer success and community over at Camo, the app that gives you video superpowers. Outside of work, she's a self-proclaimed fantasy basketball expert and is a member of BTS Army, her favorite band in the world. So let's jump right in as we speak and discover Eden Liu. Eden, how are you doing today? I am doing great, Janaid. I'm really excited to be talking to you on this podcast. Oh my God. So Eden and I, we met through mutual love for people that are in our communities, such as Ecamm Live, such as live streaming. And we met at Social Media Marketing World last month or in March. Yeah. And it was really fun. I was like, I got to meet this human being over here. And then, you know, over time, we were just, hung got to hang out got to talk she brought me on her podcast and like dude we gotta do podcasts together so here we are it's pretty awesome yeah it's really awesome man it's just i feel like the connections at in-person events happen so organically sometimes like i feel like with virtual sometimes it's like oh can i get an email intro it's never quite mm -hmm. the same as just being in the same space with someone for yeah. a few hours and then just being like aware of what they're doing and then just being like Oh, I should just go say hi and introduce myself, yeah. like, which is exactly what happened with us. <laughs> it is. It is. And then what's funny is that that wasn't the only thing, right? We, we've been connected virtually or been hanging out in the same communities yeah. where you would see each other. I'm like, okay, there's somebody I know. So there's a connection already building. But right. when you see it in person, like, okay, oh, this is the same person. And then you get that same kind of feeling like, okay, this is going to be a good connection kind of thing. So it's a combination, right? Over time. Totally. You yeah. build it. Yeah. I mean, especially because I've seen you on Ecamm streams mm -hmm. for like your home studio mastery. And yeah. I was just like, oh my God, that's, that's the legend over there. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally just being like, I think it was Doc that was like, just go say hi. And I was like, yeah, yeah why, why don't I go say hi? <laughs> <laughs> Super awesome. Well, I'm really happy that you're here. We can't wait to get into your journey because each one of us, you know, we have a journey and, and the reason that we show up on camera, we show up on podcasts is because either we have a message to share or there's 
something that we are so itching to share that we had to go public on it, right? right? Not everybody is creating a podcast. Not everybody has a live stream. Not everybody is comfortable in front of the camera. It took me a while. It took me a while to, you know, get to this level. It took me two and a half years. Me to too. Be like, okay, this is who I am. <laughs> so share with us, you know, how the little story around behind Eden. Sure. Um, I'll try to keep it somewhat concise because there's a lot of kind of moving parts to it. Mm -hmm. So I guess it really starts in 2017. I had just quit my job in New Orleans where I'd been working for uh, seven or eight years and had interned them for, for them when I was in college. So mm -hmm. it's like basically my entire adult life, I had the same job working in New Orleans doing a special events operation for a small event mm -hmm. company. In 2017, I had to move back to Arkansas because of family issues, which was a move that like I hated at the time. I felt like it was out of my control. It wasn't my decision. And then I felt like I was like throwing away the life that I'd built for myself over the last decade, mm -hmm. which was my entire adult life at this point. So yeah, I think I was, yeah, 87. So in 2017, I was 30. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that actually helped me get through the stress of this huge life change was listening to podcasts. Just, I found the comfort in the routine of, you know, you know, this show is going to be released every day or every week, whenever, and just like hearing comforting voices for things that you're interested in. And I went from being a passive listener to the podcast. I, one of my favorite podcasts, it was called um, the uh, True Who podcast on ESPN. And I went from a very passive listener to a very engaged member of the podcast community through Twitter, where I ended up getting noticed by the producer, Jade mm -hmm. Hoy, who asked me to share my thoughts just in like a private message to him, just sort of asking for feedback. What did I think about this segment, about this thing, new thing that they tried? Yeah. And I thought it was just me sharing my, my genuine thoughts about a podcast that I was extremely passionate about that had helped mm -hmm. me really through some dark times. And... After a few back and forths, Jade, my producer, was like, hey, do you want to come on the show? <laughs> I, I was like, I had never done any public speaking up to this point. And yeah. it was just their Friday mailbag show as a guest. So it wasn't like he wasn't asking me to come on the show and talk basketball immediately. But I'd never done public speaking before and was like totally terrified. But mm -hmm. Jade was like, no, you you get the show. You listen to the show. I, I know through my conversations with you that you get the show. And yeah. I just think it would be fun to have you on. So I went on. I was terrified. But I just jumped in. I prepped for it and I, you know, I prepped, honestly, I realized I'd been prepping for it for a long time through all mm -hmm. the times I was already listening to the show and through sharing yeah. the feedback with the producer. So I did great. First guest appearance went great. I thought, cool, that's something that I can say I did once, you know? Mm -hmm. And then yeah, exactly. it's something that I was just like, cool, did it once. Awesome experience. Didn't think much about it anymore. Mm -hmm. About a month later, Jade asked me again, do I want to join, like come back on? And I was just like, whoa, I mean, sure. It was fun the first time and, you know, <laughs> yeah, much less yeah. nervous the second time. Why not? And then, so I came on again and then through over the course of like probably a six or seven month period of joining the show every once in a while, I eventually ended up just being part of the crew. I, I don't even think there was an official, like official moment where it was like, you are now part of the, you're no longer a mm -hmm. guest, you're actually part of the show. But yeah. it, it happened over like a six or seven month period. And so that's how I got started in podcasting. So I just started out as a guest appearing, you know, once every month or so to eventually doing three or four shows a week, the lifestyle culture podcast, the Friday mailbag, and also doing the NBA daily ding and the basketball buds for mm -hmm. the athletic, which was the other podcast that the same team produced. So that's how I got started in podcasting. I learned the ins and outs of scheduling, learning about gear, software, prepping show rundowns, all of which was new to me. I'd never done any of it before, but yeah. I'm, and I know you're like this too. It's like, I love learning new things, love just trying new things, things Bring that are it on. outside of my comfort zone. And yeah. because I think that's the only way we keep growing as humans. So it's like, I, I just did it like Nike. So that's, that was <laughs> my podcast start. And that is just part one of, of yes. my story. <laughs> so no, this is, yeah, like 2016 through 2018 ish is where I, I like really fell into, started listening to podcasts and, you know, just throughout, I was just was a listener. Next thing I know, I am doing podcasts. And yeah. it was <clears throat> such a surreal experience at the time. 
because it was like, I was on shows with like uh, Zach Harper, who's like this huge basketball Twitter personality. And it was just mm -hmm. like mind blowing that this was like <laughs> someone that I got to share a stage with. Mm -hmm. um, but so around that time, as I mentioned earlier, I had moved from New Orleans back to Arkansas. I yeah. quit my full-time job. I was started to do the podcast stuff slowly, but was really moved home to take care of my family. So it was, I didn't, wasn't looking for work actively, was kind of just really spending it to like reset. Yeah. But, and I, I'm, I know family is a big, very important value to you too. So it's oh, like, absolutely. it's, it was one of those things where it was something I knew I had to do, even though it felt like it wasn't my choice. And so it was like, I sort of like this, it, a lot of internal, like, turmoil and just like not being where I, I wanted to be at their age 30. No one wants to move back in with their parents at age 30. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, I think part of like, it's it's uh, definitely more of a immigrant mindset that like of how important family is. And that's just like, if your family needs you, you you're there for your family. And it's it's a great mindset because families who stick together grow old together. Totally. You and know? like, I don't mm -hmm. know if you've felt this way, but it, that's something that's very hard for me to connect with for, with some of my American friends is mm -hmm. like when I was talking to some of my friends about the move, they were like, well, why don't you just not move? And I was like, what do you mean? I, I can't just not move. Just not move. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, that's not an option. And they're like, mm -hmm. well, why do you need to go home though? Like, why do you need to go back and be with family? I'm like, because my family needs me. Like, yeah. so it, it wasn't, it was something I knew I had to do, but it wasn't something I wanted to do. So I was feeling very, very lost and my mental health, not going to lie, total wreck. Doing the podcast and getting to be a part of it was like the one thing that kept me hanging on by a string. I'm not even kidding. Like that experience really saved my life in some ways. But yeah. during the same period, I started doing yoga five or six times a week and sometimes twice a day even. Like it's, it's really funny because I always tell the story about how my best friend in New Orleans had been teaching yoga for a long time already and always mm -hmm. telling me, yo, I think you could really benefit from yoga. Like, and I was always like, please, I run, I play basketball. I am a <laughs> real athlete. I'm not going to yeah. sit around and stretch and breathe with you. Like, exactly. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I was like that total jock, jock mindset, but it's funny because, you know, I went from that to all of a sudden doing yoga five or six times a week. And I started practicing religiously, essentially. And then that led to me being noticed by the studio owner who ended up becoming my mentor after she convinced me to join her yoga teacher training program. So fast forward to a year and a half later, I'm doing the, te the teacher, I completed the teacher training program and I started teaching yoga and also producing a podcast for her because she knew that I did the podcast stuff. So through my podcasting and yoga experiences, things that were completely brand new to me, and I would definitely call these hobbies, became part of who I am, both personally and professionally, because I was thinking about it. I was really thinking about my story because when I was prepping for this call and I was just like, oh, through my podcasting and yoga experiences, what did I learn? You know, I learned the ins and outs of podcasting. I learned how to be a good podcast guest and a good host. I learned through yoga, like how to present directions clearly, like the power of community engagement, like how to communicate and connect with people in meaningful ways through verbal and nonverbal cues and got comfortable with public speaking on stage through like our podcast live shows and through yeah. teaching and demonstrating yoga classes. Like I learned just so many skills that I don't even think of them as skills, but when I look back, they are. Absolutely. So these things that I listed just now, like these sort of things that I learned are all things that are completely what I do now at my job. So I run the CS team and I connect with our customers. And so all of those things I said about like, you know, podcasting, community engagement, like speaking, like, and communicating in meaningful ways, like that all applies to my current role. And so that is, brings us to sort of like the last part of the story, which is the pandemic, which is, yes. I know your part of your story too. Is exactly. It is. It's part of all of our stories. <laughs> totally. None of us can act like 2020 did not impact us. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So up to the point in 2020, I'd always been someone that was very comfortable, loved taking pictures, loved taking pictures, loved being in pictures, but never really gravitated towards video because, you know, I don't mm -hmm. need to. Yeah. And then 2020 happened. So I couldn't teach yoga in studios anymore. Uh, we had to cancel all of our podcast live shows that we had planned. And 
like everyone else, it's like I found myself in front of the camera and mm -hmm. we started live streaming our podcast. I started teaching yoga over Zoom and I don't even think that I thought about it as learning how to be comfortable on video. It was just like all we can do is video now. Yeah. And then yeah. through the reps and watching my videos back, watching the live streams, you know, getting feedback from my mentor about like my teaching through video. Mm -hmm. Like I learned a lot by just doing and getting feedback from the people that were close to me and that I could learn from. So that is really <laughs> just how all of those life experiences culminated into this point that landed mm -hmm. me where I am. And I just thought it was so cool because I never thought about it that way until you asked me, you told me that you wanted to talk about my journey and my story. Yeah. And I was like, do I have a story? I was like, am I going to show up to this podcast and not, <laughs> and not have a story to tell? And then I mm -hmm. realized like, that is a story. Like yeah. my journey is a story and it's, it's really cool how all of the moving pieces that podcasting and yoga I thought were completely unrelated, but mm -hmm. it turns out they were actually really interconnected yeah. and doing both of those just provided me with the skills that I use at my job today. And when 2020 forced us all to go virtual, yeah. it's how I ended up loving being in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's so powerful. That's such a powerful story. And and the way you told it, right, it's, it's simple things that we do for the people that we love, for the things that we love, for the passion that we have. And if I rewind back to 2016, right, you would not be listening to a podcast about sports if you weren't into sports already. That's right. It's a hobby, right? you know? <laughs> so you got to have some kind of passion on, around anything, right, to be able to dive into that podcast and really love that conversation because as as I know people who love sports, because I'm, I'm not somebody who's into that space, they talk about it nonstop. And I've, yes. I've gone to people's houses like family and they talk about sports like it's like that's what they do every day. It's like that's what we what breathe. Yeah. We it's eat, what you sleep, breathe, right? Breathe, so I'm like, okay, this yep. is pretty intense, right? So I'm seeing that pattern. I'm I'm looking at from the from the detective's eye, you know, observing, okay, why are they talking about this? Oh, because they're really into it. And I even suggested to my uh, nephews that, dude, you guys should do a podcast about the sports because you can really make it huge in Absolutely. there. But, you know, they're like, nah, it's, podcasts are just a fad, right? They didn't see it from the perspective I was seeing. I mean, right. there's 2.4 million podcasts now. And uh, if they had stepped in, it would have been something different for them. But again, everybody goes through the journey that they want to based on who they are based on what motivates them and how they want to, you know, take life by the horns or, you know, ride, ride. either you're in the passenger seat or, or you take the wheel and driving. like, Hey, I'm going to go this way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which so is, I love that. well, I love that analogy you just made about taking the wheel and going this way because and as a part, as I'm reflecting about the story I just told about my experience, mm -hmm. I thought that I was sitting in the passenger seat, but to be honest, I was actually kind of in the driver's seat. Yeah. Like I thought I was along for the ride with my family and what they needed me for, mm -hmm. but like it allowed me to step away from my life that was in New Orleans and the, I was very busy, you know, doing events in New Orleans. And yeah. so I didn't ever have time to stop and think and reflect about things that I really loved, like sports. Like I, I had the opportunity to, to work in basketball, to work in sports through podcasting, which is, was a life dream of mine that I never yeah. thought would become a reality. And if my family hadn't asked me to move home, I never would have stepped away from the job that would have given mm -hmm. me the time to be able to put into learning this new skill and getting to talk about something I'm extremely obsessed with. Yeah. It's amazing, right? What what things throw it's it's almost like you were driving your car in New Orleans and they're like, Wait, we need your help. We need a driver. Yeah. <laughs> right. So they, they called you back because like, hey, we can't drive anymore. Can you come drive for us? Totally. But we wow. didn't see it from that perspective, right? Yeah. Hindsight is always twenty twenty. And it's that's a spec a spec a especially poignant analogy mm -hmm. because 
my di- my parents did need me to drive them around <laughs> when I moved back. To <laughs> that was one of my major things that they needed help with was getting yeah. from point A to point B. So wow, and of course we didn't have Uber or you know. Sure, there was technology like that, but again, it's it's different, right? It's different when you have yeah. family. Like, hey, you can come and drive. And what's funny, you noticed mentioned that right when you moved, your certain age, and I was I was trying to remember when I moved out of my house because I was living with my parents, and we actually moved out when I I probably turned thirty thirty two, mainly because I had to leave and um, go find a job. So I moved out, and then from there we moved to Virginia on a certain age, and I was like, interesting. I was like looking at how old my wife was, and then it was like, wow, that's pretty interesting. It's a turning point. Like every time you cross a decade, it is. It, it changes you. It it brings more wisdom, and it it's really really amazing. So I'm I'm wondering what I'll do when I turn fifty. <laughs> No, no, no need to overthink it because I know you know it's just what it's 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 fun to think about but at the same time I just just given the story I just told it's like we just never know what external factors are going to happen Absolutely. that will drive us in a different direction exactly so we just got to keep hanging on we just got to be in the driver's seat and do what we love to do totally right? and that's where the high beast come in that's where the passion comes in that's where the documenting the video like all of this changed what where we could have been or where we would not how would you say it not have even thought about going there yeah like it's i never in a million years thought this is the job that i would have that i would get to be in front of the camera ever yes. for one like never mm-hmm. even considered that like growing up you know i had a really close friend who we always joked that she always wanted to be a celebrity and mm-hmm. then i always joked i just want to be your manager like i i never wanted to be in the spotlight i never yeah, craved yeah. that i always loved being sort of like just i will support you from here and like mm-hmm. i'm really great at that role i always say like i'm e in entourage like it's like yeah. not the star but like mm-hmm. i'm the one that like i like to hold other people up so it kind of makes me yeah. perfect for this job is because camo is the star i'm mm-hmm. just get to represent it and support it so yeah yeah no, that's that's really powerful so oh my god so we talked about your journey how you came to this point and all the different paths and the, and the journeys you took and and I just love to you know listen to those stories because it helps me make a story out of my life and make sense of why I'm doing things so thank you so much for sharing of course and you also shared you know the motivations for the things that you did right sometimes it's not a motivation sometimes it's an ask from yeah. someone like I was asked if we could move to Virginia I was like okay I guess guess we'll move to Virginia yeah. so you can be close to your mom <laughs> and uh, you can you, you can help her you know with um, her knee surgery and whatnot but then that became into a totally different chapter you know we ended up buying a place I'm like oh we have space for bee, bees now you know yeah. it's all people pull us but then we find our we find our bearings because that's who we are yeah a hundred percent. Also something interesting that yeah. uh, when you brought up beekeeping, it just made me think of how I I know about your beekeeping through, you know, seeing all of your appearances on all these different live streams and like you mm-hmm. talk about it. It's such a part of your podcasting origin story, right? Because that's how you started podcasting. Yeah. But that just moment just now caused me to think I was like to think about how my hobbies like basketball, like yoga, like BT, being a BTS fan, how how these hobbies actually influence me mm-hmm. when I am producing content and coming up with ideas because, you know, it's like from the sports aspect, there's the very sports talk and um, announcer style presenting on video. And then yeah. yoga, it's a very like meditation and like inner breathing and self-reflection um, and like with the BTS stuff, they, you know, they live stream all the time. I've learned so I've actually learned a lot about live streaming from just Ooh, watching their live streams and how they engage out. with the people watching their shows. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's just crazy how our hobbies can, can contribute to our actual professional lives. Yeah. And, and the more diverse we have our hobbies, yes. the more 
tolerant we become. Yeah, I totally you know? agree. Yeah. Oh gosh, that reminds me of, I forgot what it was, but it's mm -hmm. a study about how, um, I really wish I could cite this because it's a really cool study about how like children growing up, if how there's much more value in having them try a bunch of different sports or play different instruments rather than force mm -hmm. them into one because like yeah. through playing soccer you learn sort of like coordination and spacing that also applies to basketball but mm -hmm. in a different way and so yeah. um i don't know it's just something you said just now just made no, me think of how awesome. like having a very versatile set of hobbies and va vastly different interests yeah. can actually you know help us grow because we have all these different experiences that people that don't have the exact same hobby set as us wouldn't have. Yeah, no, 100%. And, and the environment and our passions, you know, they all combine in making uh, the, making the pos making us who we are possible. Being, becoming. Make, yeah. Becoming. Unlocking our potential. Unlocking our potential. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, if you go to a forest and there's a tall, really tall tree, it was only possible because it got the most sun, it got the most water, and then the trees around it are, are either farther apart or like right next to it Had are small shrubs and whatnot. Grow. So yeah. you got to have that space to grow. You got to have the conditions in place. Uh, there's a really awesome analogy that Malcolm Gladwell shares in his book around around that. Either it was Malcolm Gladwell or Seth Godin. I got to bring one of those guys to the podcast. And you do. It's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. <laughs> so thank you so much, Eden. It's been amazing talking with you. But after the break, Eden's going to share three hacks to take away that you can apply in your life immediately. So I got stick you. around. I'm ready. I'm ready with my hacks. <laughs> She's ready. So stick around, guys. We'll be right back after these messages. I'm Janet Ahmed, host of Hacks and Hobbies podcast and a digital presence advisor at HumbleZone. This episode is brought to you by Home Studio Mastery. I launched a consultation and course program to help podcasters and course creators to create a space in their homes that will reduce the friction of creating content and appearing their best when showing up on camera. The pandemic gave us a lot of issues, but this one is here to stay. We're now so much closer to our audience thanks to video becoming more popular and affordable. I help guide folks who want to create Hollywood-worthy studios to not only capture great content, but also build more confidence, more authority, and be more comfortable in front of the camera. If I can do it, you can too. And with my help, you can do it faster. So if you'd like to learn more, visit homestudiomastery.com and how you too can create a home studio that brings out your personality, professionalism, and possibilities. Hey guys, welcome back to the episode. It's been so much fun hanging out here with Eden Liu. As we were in the green room, we got to chat about how our past experiences make so much for what we are doing today. I remember in the origin story, she mentioned that she was running events. She was like the lead in event management. And if you think about it, there's, that's a lot of coordination. Coordination. Right? Putting Lots moving parts together in ways that make sense. Yeah. yeah. And, and all of that experience is so handy as a podcaster, as somebody who's a, who used to be a yoga instructor, somebody who's managing different platforms it's it's so powerful and so any past experience that you have is definitely going to propel you much farther ahead in whatever you're looking to do because we are all on a journey and we're constantly climbing we're constantly going up unless you you know you have a way to slow down or, or you know you don't want to go that path you can always switch but then even if when you switch, those past experiences are so Still monumental. Still relevant. Like even just now, I'm thinking about how even before the events, which was like the first real job I had, mm -hmm. I worked in the service industry. I was a waiter in, in college. And then I worked yeah. for Abercrombie and Fitch as like a store manager. But it's like, mm -hmm. that's why I am such a good customer service manager because mm -hmm. 
I have, I've been on, I've been in the trenches with, yes. when it comes to customer service. And, um, I really drive that, really drive that home to my team to make sure that no customers ever have to experience, mm -hmm. you know, anything other than the best customer support possible. I so. love that. I absolutely love that. So in take it away, share three hacks to take away for the audience so they can apply it in their lives immediately. All right. Are you okay. ready, Janaid? I've I'm got ready. Three I'm really ready rocking hacks. The first two also have to do with my origin story. Mm. They are from being raised in an Asian household where moms have all of the best life hacks. They the do. first one <laughs> is to eat chips or popcorn Cheetos with chopsticks because Ooh. you don't get your hands dirty. Oh my God. And you know, we're, we're always on our phones. You, you can't eat chips and play with your phone at the same time, right? No. So it not only prevents your hands from getting greasy, you also can control your pacing, eating. Intake, you don't, you're yeah. not like, I. If, if I'm eating chips with my hands, I'm inhaling that bag. Mm -hmm. ha handfuls of chips at a time. But yeah. if I use chopsticks, I have to pick them up one, maybe two at a time. And it just helps with the pacing. So that is hack number one. Ooh, I love that. Hack number two, also food related because Asians, we love food and Asian moms always make <laughs> yes, sure we, we are well fed. <laughs> um, oh my God. Yeah. It's a struggle you know, in my family over here. If you ever run into an Asian mom, first thing she asks is, if, have you eaten? So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and that is when you buy a bunch of green onions, you chop them up all the entire bunch, you chop them up and freeze them. And you can just throw in a handful whenever you're ready to use them. That way you don't have to worry about, you know, cause they come in a bunch, right? And yes. you only use one or two at a time. Mm. They end up, half of the bunch ends up wilting in the fridge or it's sitting in a tub of water and you're waiting for it to sprout for, for months. Just chop those babies up. You can, you will have green onions at any time, easy. And it tastes the same. You can use it, use it to make scallion oil. You know, it doesn't compromise the integrity mm -hmm. of the scallion flavor. Um, that is life hack number two. Oh my God, I love that. And life hack number three is a shameless plug, which is using your phone as a powerful video tool using Camo. Absolutely. <laughs> Guys, if you haven't checked out Camo, it is a really powerful app on your device. You can plug it, you can install the app on your device, on your Smartphones, is it, is it for every platform? Yes, Android and iOS. All right, so it's on every Windows platform. Windows and Mac. And Windows and Mac, dude, you can't go wrong with that because you're supporting the entire entire spectrum of devices. Install it on your machine, you connect your phone, plug it in, and now you've got a camera for free. You get an extra camera for free. Amazing camera. All mm -hmm. of these companies put so much R&D, especially Apple and Google, like and Samsung, the big the big three when it comes to phones, yeah. they put so much R and D into that into that tiny camera. Mm -hmm. So so unlock the power of that camera yeah. using camo. <laughs> using camo, bam, bam, bam. I love that. I I really like the the tips because the one thing that's going bad in our fridge is cilantro. Now, what can we do with cilantro? Because yes! <laughs> you can do the same thing with cilantro. Okay, so you we can, can chop it up. Chop it up freeze it yeah. and then we can use it. Okay. Yeah. I'm telling my wife, I'm like, okay, we're no longer buying cilantro on demand because we're going to freeze it now. Yes. I'm telling you, yo, I, uh, my, my roommate uses a lot of cilantro. I'm always seeing those things will in the fridge and I'm just mm -hmm. like, ah, oh, if only she noticed that I chop and freeze all of my leafy greens. <laughs> <laughs> what about, what about spinach? Yeah, can you I mean, do that with spinach? I think so. Yeah. I mean, okay. that's, they have frozen spinach, so, you know. They do. That's true. Yeah. Spinach, okay. I, I really think with any any leafy greens, it, it works. I know for sure leeks and scallions, like, so that genre of, like, sort of the root, the ones that kind of sprout, uh -huh. I guess. So those are, those are definitely, I have tried and true. All right. What do you do with leeks? Because we got, we, my wife was on this journey of, you know, eating healthy, and so now we have some leeks hanging around either in the freezer or in the fridge. I can't remember, but she's like, I don't like the taste. <laughs> I don't love the taste or texture of leeks too, if I'm being mm -hmm. honest. So one really, really good Chinese dish is like stir frying leeks with either like spicy pork, marinated pork or, or beef, or mm -hmm. even I've never tried it with chicken. It's mostly usually pork or beef. So okay. like, cause the, the power of, and the flavor, of the marinade and the meat complement mm -hmm. the leek very well. Okay. Or also leeks work well in soups. 
Mm. I don't know. They taste less leaky to me. The cell. I, you know, <laughs> like I feel like it adds leak some... leaky in a different way. Yeah. <laughs> It adds like some depth of flavor, but it's mm. not like overpowering. And yeah, those are those are my top top two leak pre preparations. I think. Well, well, guys, you won't believe it, but this is the first time we've talked this much about food on this <laughs> podcast. Okay. Yo, food is a hobby of mine. Okay. <laughs> so it fits because I love food, but I don't talk a whole lot about it because well, well, right now I'm fasting, but. I don't love it as much as most people do. Like I don't, I wouldn't call myself a foodie, but apparently, uh, my wife said that I am picky about my food as well. So I'm like, okay, Ooh. maybe I am. <laughs> I like them a certain way. Like I, yeah. I'll, I'll only watch movies that I like. And people right. say you watch every movie. I'm like, no, I don't. I don't watch horror. I don't watch romance. I don't watch. <laughs> I don't like, like I watch all the good ones. <laughs> all the good ones, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like a really good one movie is coming in theaters on May 27th. And if you are going to miss it, please don't because it's a movie that's been in the making for the past 30 years, okay? Do you know which movie this is? No. The what technology. Is this? It was all holding back because of the technology. And they've, they've been hyping it up for the past couple of weeks because it's coming in a month. And okay. it's, uh, it's called Maverick by Top Gun or Top Gun part two oh, with tom cruise that's right yes oh I'm, I just, I'm totally watching it yeah i just saw the the trailer on what all the actors had to go through oh, wow. to train for the movie they're going underwater training and then and then they have they're like dipped upside down underwater and they have to get out of the seat belt because oh. they're going to be flying airplanes yeah that's <laughs> awesome insane. Wow. It was it was such a powerful video and I'm like, oh my God. I was I was getting goosebumps just watching these guys do the training and it's just amazing what you can accomplish when you put your mind to it. And here's the cool part, right? Because we are video creators, we are in front of cameras, they're like, when you're up there 10,000, 20,000 feet in the sky, you're your own director. Yeah. So they had they've got six cameras, six or seven cameras mounted inside the cockpit. And they have cool. to basically, you know, clap themselves in and then hit record. They have to yeah, because no they one else it. can no one else exactly. can be in there with them. Wow. Yeah. I'm like, holy crap, that's in in itself. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Shows to go like Video is life. Like literally, we are we are live. We're we're talking to each other, and it's be if we didn't have video, the experience would be a lot different. Definitely, because I've so recorded powerful. so many podcasts with with just audio, and mm -hmm. um, man, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes there are times where I know other people are gonna carry the conversation a little more. I'm over here recording. I'm like stretching, doing other things, and I'm definitely yeah. not as engaged. But yeah. when it's video you stay engaged because you're talking to an actual person. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, 100%. Well, Aiden, it has been a blast speaking with you. Thank you so much for your time and energy. And the, the hacks are amazing. I'm going to go apply them right now. So, guys, if you've got leafy greens, <laughs> chop them, freeze them, and then you can use them anytime. all throughout. Anytime yeah. you're cooking some good food. All right. So this is the point where we ask these fun questions. All right. I'm ready. What is the one hobby that you wish you got into? The one hobby I wish I got into is tennis. Mm. I played tennis up until the point I was in second grade and I just kind of fell off of it. But um, my best friend is a tennis player. He used to play semi-professionally. He's a tennis coach. And like we've had a lot of conversations about different sports because he also watches basketball. So we've just talked yeah. a lot about like sports in general and we kind of compare and I was just like, there's actually a, so much, so many ways your body moves while playing mm -hmm. tennis that you don't move in, in any other sports. Like the side, yeah. the oblique work that you get from each mm -hmm. swing is, is something so unique to tennis. And, um, you know, I want those side abs. I want those side <laughs> obliques, you know? So, so that's a hobby I wish I'd gotten into. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. I need to add some oblique workouts to my non-existing workout. It's hard. Here. It's hard yeah. to work in the obliques. So it, yeah. it's just like, but if you think about it, that tennis, that constant mm. swinging, both sides, you have to yeah. really engage your core to deliver those powerful swings. 
That's amazing. All right, next question. What did you want to be when you were a child? I had two dreams. One was to be a doctor because Asian parents, they just drill that into your head. You don't really think about it. You just grow up thinking that you're going to be a doctor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then my the sister's other... a doctor, but she <laughs> my, wanted to be. My brother is also a doctor and he also wanted to be. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> um, that uh, I wanted to be a figure skater. I mm. looked up to Michelle Kwan and Christy Yamaguchi. It was the first time I saw pe athletes that looked like me on television. And so I did figure skate through uh, competitively up to till about 14 or 15. And then I wanted to play basketball also in which my parents forced me to give up competitive ice skating because when are you going to ice skate when you have basketball games twice a week and you're practicing basketball five days a week. And so I had to concede that did not mm. become a figure skater, but I still, I still got it. You know, you I'm still got moves. Yeah. I'm out there. I'm out there. <laughs> nice. I like that. I like that. <clears throat> Next question. What is your favorite movie or TV show? My favorite TV show. In recent history, I'm someone who this answer changes depending on my mood and time of day sometimes. My favorite TV show recently that I've watched is Vincenzo. It is a Korean drama that is that starts off, it's it's about a uh, consigliere for the Italian mob who goes back, he's Korean, he's adopted by Italians. And mm -hmm. he goes back to Korea to, to wrap up some affairs and just gets sucked into this whole epic saga with a really corrupt company that he ends up fighting against because he's mm -hmm. also a lawyer. Um, but it's a, just such a really well complete package from beginning to end. Mm. Like the first episode starts off. It is insane. Insane. I can't even like explain how insane like the first scene is. It like blew my mind. And I was like, there's no way this show is going to be able to keep up this pacing yeah. and like intrigue and, you know, shock value. No way it's going to happen. It delivered. So Vincenzo, wow, it's nice. on Netflix. Yeah. Now question as what language is it? dubbed in or is it english is it korean is it chinese korean and it has subtitles in a bunch of different languages i okay they do dub some foreign shows on netflix for english yeah. seekers but i have a i am i'm vehemently against dubbing because i think it just, doesn't it's not it's not yeah it's not, it's not no. accurate yeah. and, they, and they never deliver things mm -hmm. I, I just always feel like anything with english dubbing whether it's anime or dramas it's I feel like everything becomes delivered in a very campy, over it does over dramatic way, and I'm like, yo, nobody talks like that. In, yeah, come on. Like, what what, what are y'all doing? Like, <laughs> it, it makes it makes us look like comics, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm just like, this is not. I can't stand by this. So you know what's, <laughs> what's funny is that I grew up watching anime, in, and it was dubbed in Arabic, oh, so wow. I I didn't understand Arabic. And I didn't understand you really like, so I was like, okay, I'm just watching this because it's just fun. <laughs> it's just fun to watch. Yeah. Do they have subtitles though? No, this is, this was, this was the, this was 30 years ago. Okay. So oh, okay. they didn't have, Yo, we only had two channels. <laughs> that they only had two channels in Saudi Arabia. So I grew up uh, in Saudi. Ah, okay. Right. One was an English channel and then the other one was an Arabic channel. So they both had at 5 PM every day, they would turn the TV on. Uh, there, they would the television channels would go live at that time because before oh, cool. that it was all off, right? Oh, wow! <laughs> and it's the first thirty minutes you get to watch um, some cartoons, and then they would be you know in yeah. <laughs> news and whatnot. So like all day long, they just had their logo up, like come back at this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, how far we have come from those days! We have days. <laughs> come so far with the twenty-four hour news news cycles and everything. All right, next question. What movie would you choose if you got to play a character in it? Oh, I would 100%. It's, I, I, I am ready for, for this question. I would be in Mission Impossible. And oh, I would yes. be either either a villain or a good guy. It doesn't matter, but I am a secret agent. I am I am having a fight scene in an elevator <laughs> yeah. I, or, or I'm getting stuck in an elevator and I have to get out of it, you know? I'm very into the elevator scenes from Mission Impossible, <laughs> you know? I just, <laughs> I, it's always something that I've dreamed of is every time, I'm big into action movies and I, I, mm -hmm. I heard you say you are too, so it's just like, mm -hmm. I just always wish I could do cool stunts, have very awesomely choreographed fight scenes. I did classic martial arts growing up. Oh uh, my God, okay. So I never hit anyone in the face, but I, it was performance martial arts. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. like, I never got to actually punch anyone, but I got to make punching look very pretty. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
Very cool. I I had a little bit of martial arts experience for like three months, and it was uh, that this this is before I moved to the U.S. and I, and it was Jeet Kune Do. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Oh, God. Kickbox, I wish I'd done. Right? Yeah. And, Jeet Kune Do. I, and I was I was like I want to go continue doing this, but but when I came to the U.S., they were really few and far between. Yeah. You know, places that were teaching that. I'm like, okay, I guess that. There's a lot more now. Yes, <laughs> it is a lot more. There's a lot of taekwondo. Yeah, there's taekwondo a lot of that. and uh, jujitsu. Brazilian jujitsu yeah, jiu is very one. popular. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wait, wait, wait. What is your answer to the movie question? My favorite. My which movie would I choose? Yeah. Iron Man. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, fine. <laughs> Great answer. Well, Great answer. I, I love. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's such a perfect answer for you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, because I got I got the reds. Come on. Yeah, and you're like a master at hacking things and making <laughs> things happen. Like it's such a perfect. It's such a perfect. I can't believe I didn't guess that. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Um, I, yeah, I love to. I love to. You know, play that character because that'd be like it's. There's so much depth in it, and it doesn't feel like it. And then if you watch the entire saga of. Iron Man going from you know the orig the first movie all the way to the end game like wow this guy yeah. really just just made everybody you know uh, he proved everybody wrong essentially yeah. man I love he's probably my favorite Marvel character yeah he's absolutely favorite. the best yeah all right on that note who is your favorite superhero my favorite superhero man I think it is Iron Man I don't think I think if we're actually Talking superheroes, like mm -hmm. real life ones, because if yeah. anime just opens up a whole bunch of doors, so we'll stick to yeah. to real life superheroes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Man, yeah, I think yeah. that's definitely my favorite. You know, ser like he was my favorite character in even the Marvel movies with all of them. Mm -hmm. um, but like, man, that just even just the, the Iron Man movies, those are always my favorite. Just his personality yeah. in combination with just like his ingenuity is yeah. like something that just, I always, always just like, ah, oh, he's so cool. He's the coolest. <laughs> you, you're so right. And and a lot of a lot of people, a lot of times that I ask people this question, they're like, it's Batman because he doesn't have a superpower. Okay, well, that's lame. He, he doesn't have a superpower. I mean, but he is a superhero. Yeah. Right? And I think that's the same, that goes the same for Iron Man. Because remember in Iron Man 3, yeah. or was it 2? Where he didn't have his suit. This is number three. Yeah, yeah, three. Right, he didn't have a suit, but he still. Yep. Was kicking ass. That's Beep. so true. Yeah. Gotta believe that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> edit. Edit. I don't think it matters. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> last question: If you were a board game, what would it be? If I was a board game, man, this is a great question because I've. Went through a few different phases with a mm -hmm. board game. I kind of want, my first instinct was to say catchphrase, but then I'm like, that's not actually a board game because there's mm -hmm. not a, a technical board involved. Um, I'll say the BTS version of Monopoly then. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Now, you kept mentioning BTS and I think I've heard some of their music, but I, I probably need to, you know, delve into a couple of their albums because... Like you're mentioning BTS, I used to be all into NSYNC. All right. We listen. Nice. <laughs> in fact, that was my first band that I attended. Oh, that is in awesome. person back in 1999. Myself, my brother, and we took my, our cousins. I'm like, all right, well, I guess we'll take you guys. And then we're like hanging out and standing. And there's like girls everywhere, like going crazy. Justin and, 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 can't remember. I don't remember. JC. JT. JC. Yeah. 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 Lance. Yeah. <laughs> Lance. It was a, it was a pretty cool experience. Yeah. So, and then, and then the, on the way home, we were like singing along their songs, of course, like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, they had a catalog, man. They had a catalog. Yes. All yes, bangers. <laughs> Absolutely. Eden, it has been a joy speaking with you learning about your journey. Thank you for the amazing hacks. I'm going to go do that right now. I'm like, yes. honey, we should just put this in the freezer. Okay. No, thank you so much for having me because honestly, I'm, I'm really excited to have gotten to share even just a few life hacks with you. 
um, because I, I really have learned so much from you just watching your streams, your guest appearances on other, other people's shows. Like I've learned so much from you. Like, I feel like if the least I can do is help save you some cilantro, <laughs> then I've done my job. <laughs> amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Eden. Where can my audience find you if they want to learn more about you or about the awesome Camo. Camo. <laughs> <laughs> I am behind many of Reincubate social media accounts at Reincubate. Um, I'm available at uh, to connect with on LinkedIn. Feel free to add me on LinkedIn. I am at Pikachu Lou um, on Twitter, Instagram, all the social medias. Um, happy to connect. Happy to talk about Camo, basketball, BTS, yoga, anything. I, I really am. I am someone that dives in passionately to all of the things that I try my hand at so um yeah feel free to connect happy to have you to connect thank you so much again there you have it guys that was an amazing conversation with eden appreciate you guys coming back and listening to these stories and taking them taking them for what it's worth i really enjoyed these conversations and it's almost selfish because i do these for myself so if you're getting something out of it i am super happy and if you have any questions please feel free to reach out at hacks and hobbies we'll see you guys next time thank you thank you and goodbye thank you for listening to this hacks and hobbies episode Junaid would love to hear from you so please leave a rating or a review on apple podcasts visit hacksandhobbies.com to find additional information on the guest today as well as the show notes.